Many non-students in Generation Z rely heavily on financial support from family members to survive. Today, I read an article on foxbusiness.com written by Eric Ravel, titled, Nearly Half of Gen Z Rely on Financial Help from Parents, Family, Bank of America Survey. The author of this article referenced a new survey from Bank of America, which revealed that nearly half of adult members of Generation Z are relying on financial help from their parents and family members to get by. The exact percentage was 46%. Now some of you might say Generation Z adults are in school and need help from their parents. Well, this study dug a little deeper. Apparently, 30% of Gen Z non-students are receiving financial assistance from their parents or other family members. Here are my thoughts. I'm surprised the percentage is this low. Inflation in America is raging, and it is difficult for adults who are established to survive. Just today, I was talking with a well-educated person in a professional job who had to stop taking one of his medications because of how expensive it had gotten. Young people starting out are going to have a tough time in this economy without support from family. Many entry-level salaries aren't going to be enough to cover the cost of overinflated rent, expensive car insurance, car repairs, groceries, cell phone bills, etc. Some of these people in Generation Z are lucky they have parents who are in a financial position to be helpful. Some parents are in a bad financial situation right now. Getting back to the article, the survey revealed that 32% of those who receive financial assistance from parents are getting $1,000 per month or more, while 44% are getting less than $500 per month. 22% of non-students in Generation Z said they were receiving more than $1,000 per month, and 55% said they receive less than $500 per month. Again, these young people are fortunate to have parents who are able to provide this type of financial assistance. I have to wonder if doing this is putting these parents in a difficult financial situation. I'm curious if some of these parents have had to cut back on retirement contributions in order to provide for their adult children. I also wonder if some of these parents have put themselves into debt to provide for their adult children. I understand parents love their kids. I just hope these parents are being careful and not overextending themselves. Getting back to the article, the author identified how members of Generation Z are using the money from family members. 57% are using it for groceries and toiletries, 53% for rent and utilities, 53% for phone plans, and 49% for health insurance payments. Well, my friends, I am not surprised that 53% of people in Generation Z are using the money from family members to pay for rent and utilities. I think we are going to see a lot more young people living at home with their parents for a very long time, depending on how much they earn and how fast they can advance in their careers. I'm going to share with you one of the saddest parts of this article. 50% of people in Generation Z said they are not on track to buy a home in the next five years. 46% said they won't be able to save for retirement, and 40% said they are not on track to start investing. Welcome to the club, Generation Z. There are a lot of Americans who are in older generations who aren't on track for any of these things. In fact, some are approaching retirement age, and they still don't own a home, and they have zero saved for retirement. This is the grim reality for many people here in America. Some young people are just now figuring out how expensive life is in the real world, and I'm sure it is a shock. I wish these young people the best as they navigate the economic realities in our country. What do you think about all this? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Young people in Generation Z hoping to save money at big lots may be in for a surprise. I read an article today on foxbusiness.com titled, Big Lots Closing Dozens of Stores, putting survival in question. According to the author, Big Lots expects to close 35 to 40 stores by the end of the year. Now here's what is scary. According to a 280-page filing, 
the company noted substantial doubt about the company's ability to continue due to shoppers pulling back on spending due to inflation. Here are my thoughts. This is pretty bad. We aren't talking about Louis Vuitton here. We are talking about big lots. If everyday Americans are struggling to the point where they can't afford to shop at big lots, we may be in some serious trouble. Now get this. Net sales were down at Big Lots, 10.2% from the same period last year. It's articles like this that really paint a picture about what is happening in the real economy. There are hardworking Americans who are struggling right now. I feel bad for the employees at Big Lots who could lose their jobs in the near future. I also feel bad for shoppers who enjoy going to these stores. Some may have to travel a lot farther to find one. Here's some more bad news for shoppers. I read an article on CNBC.com written by Melissa Repko titled, Costco Hikes Membership Fee for the First Time Since 2017. According to the author, the Costco membership fee will increase by $5 in the U.S. and Canada by September 1st. This means a membership will cost $65 as opposed to $60. Their higher tier plan called Executive Membership will increase to $130 per year from $120. Here are my thoughts. I hate to hear about Costco jumping on the inflation bandwagon with everyone else. At least they are keeping their hot dog prices the same. I have no doubt there are loyal Costco shoppers who will have no problem with the increase in cost because of the savings they realize when they shop there. Now here's a story you won't believe. I read this on Yahoo Finance, put out by Benzinga, and written by Adrian Volnick, titled, Volkswagen Ends Free Porsche Company Cars for 200 Executives. Now, they will have to settle for expensive Audis. According to the author, a new policy bans top managers from getting Porsche Company cars, except for Porsche managers and high-level executives like the Volkswagen CEO. Apparently, Many executives returned these expensive cars in poor condition. Also, Volkswagen said they need to save money due to financial challenges. Ladies and gentlemen, do you notice a theme today? Companies are having financial challenges. This is so different than what I hear on television from the mainstream media. I often hear the economy is booming. I'm not surprised that some executives returned their Porsches in poor condition. Many humans don't take care of things that aren't theirs. I'm often shocked by how bad some rental cars with low mileage are. What do you think about all this? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Please keep in mind that everything in this video is for entertainment purposes only, and nothing in this video is financial advice or advice of any kind. If you need advice, seek advice from a qualified professional in good standing who puts your interests first and foremost. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel. Please also consider sharing this video with your friends. I want to extend a special thanks to everyone who has subscribed to this channel. I want to also thank all of my channel members. If you would like to become a channel member, there is a link in the description beneath this video. You can read more about the different membership levels. Please also check out some of the great books that I suggest you consider reading in the description below. I've included Amazon affiliate links to these books. As an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. Stay healthy and wealthy. I'll see everyone in the next video.